But Jesus says, no, everyone's got the same spiritual problem. The religious people and the irreligious people have the same spiritual problem. And so I think we can extrapolate this idea a little bit to say that really Christians and non-Christians today still have the same problem. What is that problem? I would say that problem is that we are all possessed by something. Now I realize when you start talking about demons and demonic possession and those sorts of things, people get a little bit skeptical. Maybe you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, I don't believe that demons really even exist. Or maybe you believe that they exist, but you don't really think they're active in your everyday life. I hope to move the needle a little bit on that with you today to help you at least wrestle with the ideas of personal, powerful, evil, spiritual forces in your life. But even if you would not move on that idea at all, if you would just stick with what you believe right now, I think you actually can still agree with this idea that we are all possessed by something. See, every one of us, religious or irreligious, has something behind our reason for existing. Like the reason we wake up in the morning, the reason we go to work, the reason we take care of our kids, the reason we don't go out and commit crimes or whatever it is, is all compelled by a big principle that's behind our life. Maybe the principle for you is, I want to be successful and significant. I want people to know my name. I don't want people to think that I'm a failure. Maybe it's you want to be comfortable. I don't really want a lot, but I also don't want to be poor. Maybe it's that you're trying to prove something to somebody. That's what my dad said about me when I was a kid. I'm going to prove him wrong. Maybe it's just that you don't want to get in trouble. Constantly just trying to avoid getting in any sort of trouble. Every one of us has a principle, something that's driving why we wake up in the morning and do life the way that we do it. The, the reason that we choose to go to the schools that we go to or not go to. The reason we shop at the places we shop or don't shop. The reason we buy the things that we buy or don't buy. The reason that we hang out with the type of people that we hang out with. All of it comes back to one core principle. It's something that drives us. And as much as we would like to think that we are autonomous and free and we choose all these things for ourselves, really there's a core principle that's driving all of it. And odds are you didn't choose it for yourself. Just to give you an example of this. Why is it that for most of human history, children have generally taken on the career path of their parents? So if you know, your daddy was a butcher, you become a butcher kind of thing. Well, I would say it's because they're seeing that life, they're experiencing it, they're seeing the value in it, and maybe their family is saying, this would be a good thing for you to do next, and so they continue in that career path. But why is it now that more and more children are not taking on the career path of their parents? because they have different influences, right? They have the internet that allows them to see all different types of careers. They have job fairs and things like this that they can see at school that there are other ways to do your life. And so their influences push them down a certain career path. Nothing really fundamentally changed about humanity. What changed is our influences and therefore we started making different choices. See, every one of us is driven by something. And it's probably something we didn't really choose. It was more so a product of our environment. And so whether you believe that demons are real or not, I think you can agree with this idea that we are all possessed by something. And Jesus' main point in this text is that that something ought to be him. That he ought to be the reason you get up in the morning. That he ought to be the reason you go to work. That he ought to be the reason you pick the friends that you pick. That he ought to be the reason that you are generous or not generous to certain people in certain situations, etc. Like Jesus has to be that main operating principle. And, and here's why. Not just because Jesus is like some control freak or narcissistic and wants you to just listen to whatever he says. He's doing that because it's beneficial for you. See, every other operating principle will demand everything of you and curse you when you fail. Just to use an example, like if you think that you know, success in the job market is like your operating principle, like you just want to be a successful working person, that will demand a lot of you. It will demand your time and your energy and your resources. And if you fail, if you're not good enough, you will either get laid off or fired or not be able to work in that career path. It will demand everything of you and it will curse you if you fail. What about a relationship? If you feel like, you know, if I'm just in a good relationship, then, then I'm somebody, then I'm okay. That's going to demand everything of you. It's going to demand your time and your energy and your resources to keep that relationship good. And if you're not that good of a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever, you're going to lose that relationship. But Jesus is different. 
Jesus doesn't demand everything of you. He gives everything to you. He gives you his life. He gives you eternity. He gives you all the resources of heaven. And when you fail, he doesn't curse you. He forgives you. He picks you back up and says, I paid for that sin too. I've redeemed you to be my child. Go be my child in the world. 